Hi there, I'm CJ Thompson. I'm a curriculum manager for STEM Scopes, and I want to show you something pretty cool called river stones. Here they are. They have nice round shape, no sharp edges, and they're so smooth. Now, how does that happen? You might guess from their name, they form in a river. The moving water of the river changes the shape of the stones over time. And that's just one way that earth materials change over time. And that's what this investigation is all about. For this investigation, you'll need the following materials small rocks. Sandstone and limestone work best. You'll need a sturdy jar with a lid that seals tightly, a scale that can measure in grams, and a towel for cleanup. To record your data, you'll need a data table like this one, with time intervals of 3 minutes from 0 to 15, a place to record mass of the rocks in grams, and a place to record the difference in mass. You'll want to begin the investigation with rocks that have already absorbed water. These rocks have been soaking for a few hours, so we're ready. Let's get our first mass reading. This is where the strainer comes in handy, as well as the towel. We'll remove the excess water from the rocks and put them on the scale to get our starting mass. It looks like the starting mass for our rocks is 50 grams, so we'll record that in the row for zero minutes along with no difference in mass. Now we'll return the rocks to the jar seal the jar tightly, and shake for three minutes. Once again, we'll remove the excess water and measure the mass of the rocks, recording this new data in the row for three minutes. Once again, we shake the rocks for three minutes. And now we measure and record the mass for six minutes. If there's no change in mass, just write zero for the difference. Continue to follow the same procedure, shaking the rocks for three minutes, then recording the mass and the difference in mass. Do this for nine minutes, for 12 minutes, and for 15 minutes. Okay, so here's our final data table. You can see that the rocks lost a total of 10 grams of mass. So I'll leave you with a couple of questions. What happened to the 10 grams lost from these rocks? Did it just disappear completely? Also, let's look at the water from the jar. See how cloudy it is? And look at the residue at the bottom. These are particles so tiny they made it through the strainer. If we were to find the mass of all of that material, what do you think it would be? Okay, well, it's just a couple of questions to think about. Until next time, bye.